Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to talk to you today for this trial lecture. I am very honored to be here today for this interview. Thank you for the search committee for this invitation. The lecture I bring you today is based on my course titled Artificial Intelligence for Advanced Power Systems. It is taught as a fourth year level as well as a first year master degree level. It runs on 16 weeks with topics related to fuzzy logic, neural networks, deep learning, and their applications in power electronics and power systems. The students have homeworks, midterms, simulation implementations, and a final project. I will discuss today how the utility grid evolved, past and present, and when discussing the future, we can see how much of very interesting work we can do together, especially how a team can contribute for the development of a smart grid technology. You have an outstanding and very creative research group on smart electric systems. Your publications and credentials on relay protection, smart grids and microgrids and your recognition on transient simulation of power systems is one of the reasons that I would like very much to join you. I ask you to please hold your questions to the end of this presentation. And now we begin. A power system can be understood in this figure. From the left side, there is an electrical generator. It can be either a synchronous or an induction machine. The machine voltage is raised with a transformer. Such a high voltage is compatible with transmission lines to allow the electrical power to travel long distances. The transmission, subtransmission and distribution voltage level depends on utility standards or regulations. The main goal is to decrease copper losses. At the distribution level, substations will step down the voltage to become compatible with commercial, industrial or residential customers. At the local level, transformers will step down for residential use at 120 volts or maybe 230 volts. Voltage and frequency depends in where the power grid is located, compare, for example, USA and European standards. Such a centralized architecture was developed about a hundred years ago. It is unidirectional. Power flows from the generation towards the final user. A lot has been developed in the past 50 years. We are in the present with already a bidirectional power flow, with integration of distributed energy resource, wind, solar, transportation, hydrogen, natural gas. The smart grid is emerging. We have to answer several questions in how energy is converted in efficient ways how to find new technologies to store and transport energy. We need to have a multidisciplinary approach in working with economics, policies and social impact. The paradigm of the circular economy supports our contributions for greater and further integration of renewable energy source. A sustainable and smart electrical power grid is the reality of our 21st century. Because the original grid was designed to deliver unidirectional electricity, the needs were much simpler. Therefore, it is possible to make analysis and design with equivalent linear loads and their required power factors. Control systems can be developed using steady-state analysis and Thevenin equivalent for circuit evaluation. Utilities assume an operation of aggregated load 
and the time span concerns seconds, minutes, and hours. In the power systems perspective, it is possible to discuss frequency variation as related to electrical power flow, and voltage variation as related to reactive power needs, and derive droop control for the power grid. In the power electronics perspective, the control system is usually concerned with the equipment designed by assuming equivalent sinusoidal voltage source at the point of common coupling and improving how the equipment may or may not distort the current supplied by the utility. The instantaneous control requirements for power electronic systems are designed for the proper instantaneous operation in a short time span, typically milliseconds and microseconds. Smart grid requires unified analysis and design on both power systems and power electronics. In the past, the power grid was very centralized. A power station would be connected to a substation. The distribution would have substations supplying the feeders for the final users. A system operator would manage the requirements and constraints. Operations were made over telephone communications. Operational engineers would make local adjustments with calculated set points. Such a centralized power grid existed from their very beginning until 1970s and in many cases until the 1980s. Phasor analysis and steady state considerations were sufficient and the major concerns were losses and reactive power. In the past grid, assumptions were sinusoidal conditions plus harmonics due to saturation and weather influence when demand was the major concern. Protection was considered to be utility-oriented. When distributed generation started to be a reality, the traditional grid started to evolve into our present grid. The traditional pass grid centralized controls on the power plant. The diagram discusses three nested control loops for the system. The boiler has a set point defined by the operation. Steam is controlled at a pressure P maintained by firing control in burning the fossil fuel. The steam expands through a turbine. The governor of the turbine maintains an output torque at required angular speed. An electrical generator is connected to the turbine shaft. The required output power of the plant is controlled by this inner loop. For a prescribed speed, the field excitation of a synchronous machine will provide the power at a reference voltage. The field control must balance the given leading power factor with the overall lagging power factor. Same apply to nuclear power plants and are also translated to large hydropower plants. When an induction generator is used, D and Q, Clark and Park transformations and vector control will make the machine to instantaneously match the operating torque and angular speed and supply active and reactive power. Modern islanding detection techniques have been developed. For example, your research group in your department published an interesting paper on an inverter-based distributed generation in microgrids with a novel contribution to enhance passive islanding detection. I study it on energy MDPIs. It's an awesome contribution. The original grid has been modified and improved since 1980s until today. We made further connections to renewable energy source. Distribution control centers became a reality 
with a supervisory control and data acquisition, SCADA. The field control is possible with data interface devices, programmable logic controllers, PLCs, sensors and control switch boxes with valve actuators. The communication systems became a combination of radio, telephone, cable, and satellite. SCADA allows to monitor and control process on various remote sites. The current grid architecture is further evolving into more interaction and connectivity. There is distributed generation with bidirectional power flow, built on the legacy of the existing power grid. Your university and your research group conduct research for the active and intelligent utilization of different flexible energy resource potentials. I hope I can join you in working for the future smart and flexible energy systems with new protection and control of a resilient smart grid technology and architecture. We can see here a voltage source converter with three possible inner controls. Based on ABC natural frame, alpha beta stationary frame and DQ synchronous frame. The DC link voltage is controlled with a PI regulator. A phase lock loop will provide instantaneous transformations for a current controller to generate signals for a sinusoidal pulse width modulation strategy. The diagram represents how a voltage source converter is a state of art today, where power electronic applications make possible inverter interface. There are other converters with multi-level or space vector or specialized inner controls, but their main function is to provide a DC voltage source as input and convert with bidirectional power flow to an AC output. Typical sources are photovoltaic arrays or fuel cells or battery systems to convert their DC into AC. Wind energy systems can be built on double PWM back-to-back -back converter with vector control on both sides of the machine and the grid with a DC link. Inverters can be voltage-fed with transistors and diodes in antiparallel, or they can be current-fed with transistors and diodes in series for high power applications. It is also possible to implement thyristors on natural commutation with a current link for multi-megawatt installations. In early applications, grid-connected inverters were supposed to supply active power and run at unit power factor. IEEE, as well as IEC standards, prohibited inverters to regulate the voltage at the point of common coupling, PCC. Utilities typically prefer for protection to require inverters to disconnect as soon as possible on most of grid disturbance. However, with higher and further penetration of renewable energy source, the inverter controls are now enhanced. They provide advanced functions such as voltage and frequency ride-through, voltage regulation, frequency response, and communications for monitoring and control. The current new generation of advanced inverters is defined as a smart inverter, also called as a multifunctional inverter. For smart grid applications, there are additional needs on top of control systems. It is necessary to incorporate bidirectional data communications with the utility, user-friendly interface, net metering, 
Lead Follower Multi-Agent Management Control. The past decade made the flexible applications of inverter-based systems to have huge and big data. Such data is approached by computer science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence applications. Here we see three statements about the smart grid being a two-way dialogue of electricity and information. We are together as a team, educators, engineers, researchers, technology decision makers, engaged, and we are together, proactive in the social impact of a future grid. Our approach is for a sustainable society with possibly 100% of renewables, with user interaction, with more plug-in electric cars. The future is what we do now. The smart grid is the new infrastructure of today's grid. Distributed generation, DG, has a power electronic interface capable of processing active power from the primary energy source. For example, solar, wind, a battery, or a fuel cell. The power grid is evolving by shifting the energy supply from large central generating stations to a smaller distributed energy resource, DERs. Power electronics is the enabling technology. A power electronics interface performs auxiliary service, such as grid support, low voltage ride through, harmonic compensation, constant power generation control, online correction of undesired effects, such as harmonic contacts, unwanted reactive and unbalanced power, SAGs, poor voltage regulation, detection of imminent fault conditions, islanding, and intelligent fault recovery. Power electronics interface enable flexible, cost-effective, and energy-efficient solutions for hybrid AC-DC systems. By integration with machine learning plus data science, it is possible to incorporate advanced forecasting, cybersecurity technologies, for a role in a new, resilient, smart grid technology architecture. Multifunctional inverters become multitask inverters, devices applied to flexible power generation. We can implement more useful, enhanced, with power quality and system reliability, plus smart grid protection features towards modern system resilience. The modernization of the electric power grid requires an advanced network of communications controls, computers, automation with new technologies and tools. It is important to have fault tolerance design for smart grids. Normally, a system is designed with the assumption of no faults. However, smart grids require fault management to be incorporated early in the design process. Reliability must be part of the design. Faults are related to how the electric power system protection responds. Interconnected grids may cause other regions to overload with a possible cascading failure. Power outages cause social and economic impacts. Fault tolerance based design should support electric power system protection. There are two possible approaches in fault tolerant control design a passive one assuming prior knowledge. In such a case, the system tolerates some faults and a controller has already compensation for such expected faults. A second approach is an active fault tolerant control where the system has adaptive learning based on technologies such as forecasting, linear quadratic, 
pseudo inverse linear algebra based intelligent control with expert systems or neural networks plus fuzzy logic. The course that I base this presentation develops techniques of artificial intelligence, namely fuzzy logic, neural networks, and deep learning for enhanced active thought management of smart grids. A teamwork, our new generation of students, must be trained for the 21st century workforce. Future smart and flexible energy systems require protection and control solutions, operations and planning, optimal and coordinated control of flexible energy resource at distribution, transmission and generation levels. In our future smart grid, the energy storage, will be integrated with different energy networks. We will bring different vectors to make possible that our society goes through an intelligent enhancement of our infrastructure on electricity, heat, gas, transport, hydrogen, water, and waste. Our teamwork of electrical engineers, other disciplines in engineering, electronics of hardware and software, computer scientists, human, economic and social scientists, we will have all together a vision for the future smart grid. We need big data engineering, parallel processing, parallel for splitting complex computational problems into smaller ones, to be solved by individual processors or by cores in a large computational power computer. Cloud computing for distributed and networking on demand data storage, remote processing and remote applications. Cyber security. As the electric grid evolves into a big data and multi-dimensional space, there is increased interdependence across power and cyber technologies. We have potential risks for cyber attacks. Therefore, it's very important that future intelligent power have cybersecurity measures to identify and mitigate cyber threats. Digital Twin Technology It's a lifetime online simulation of the real system on a virtual world. It's an important enhancement of the future smart grid because anything happening in real time can be evaluated with computational resources online. It's the end of my lecture. I thank you very much for this opportunity. Please ask your questions. I also have a few other slides for discussions on vision and future for a joint work.